And we welcome you this afternoon to the ribbon cutting for the global headquarters of our new SFCN building. So thank you for being here. And I just would like to give special recognition to our Miss Spanish Fork and her royalty. And it's really fun to see former employees, former city managers, former mayors and council members here, and so many employees and residents here to join us today. So with that being said, we are going to move forward with the program. Um, we have the first remarks will be from the SFCN director, Brian Perry, and then Brian Backey hopefully will be able to make it. He's coming from... He's here. He's Brian, welcome! How was traffic from Salt Lake? It was the worst. Bad traffic. If only he lived in Spanish Fork. We don't have traffic problems here, do we? Do we? Okay, after Brian, we have Chris Hogan with Hoganson Construction. And then we will wrap it up with our city manager, Seth Perrins, and our mayor, Mike Mendenhall. We'll get to that point, and then we'll cut the fiber. Oh, no. <laughs> Just for the record, we are not cutting fiber. This is coax. <laughs> so I, I will not be the one that holds up this ceremony today, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody that's here. Um, I see a lot of faces that have contributed to this in one way or another over the last few years. It's been a big, big project. Thanks to my wife, she hasn't seen me much for the last few months, so it's, <laughs> it's going to be great. But before we get started, uh, I want to give special thanks to, where's Mercedes? Raise your hand. Where's Mercedes? Mercedes has put a lot of effort into putting this particular event together, even though it's her birthday. So... On the count of three, one, two, three, big happy birthday to Mercedes. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Mercedes. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here. If you haven't gotten in the raffle already, please do that. Please feel free to wander through the building, check things out, ask us questions. This is really, this is a building as much for you and for our support of the network services here in our town. So please make yourselves at home. Thanks again for everybody that's here for this. Um, thank you everyone for um, making it here today. I barely did, so uh, I'm glad, glad we made it. Um, when we started this project um, a few years ago, um, the city and Brian Perry and SFCN um, had a few clear objectives. Um, I can remember three. Uh, they wanted the building to be highly functional uh, and provide room for growth for for a department that's grown uh, to, I think, almost 40 employees now um, and has grown over the course of over two decades now and continues to grow, um, they wanted to take advantage of the surrounding views. Um, it's not often we have a basically a 360 panorama of such beautiful mountains. Um, and then third, they wanted SFCN to represent them as a brand. Um, so, you know, as kind of the old SFCM building served its purpose really well for many years, uh, it's probably more representative of the era of coax that we soon are cutting um, and big box TVs and corded phones, um, whereas this building should represent fiber speeds and cutting edge technology. Um, and re really kind of emulate the service it provides to its community. Um, so hopefully, if we did our job right, you will see those design goals as you walk around today. Um, so it's taken a lot of people, as Brian alluded to, to make this vision a reality. Um, so I just want to thank the city, the city council, the mayor, um, Seth, the parents, Tyler Jacobson, the entire, the entire project management crew, uh, Matt Romero, um, of course, Brian Perry and SFCN. I want to thank our office, Playlock and Partners. Um, it takes a lot of people to really kind of um, make this vision a reality. Uh, Jonathan Greer, who uh, was my driver down here <laughs> and got me here. I'd like to thank Jonathan. Uh, he was a driving force in the design of this project. Um, and I'd like to thank Hogan Construction. Uh, they've been um, really a pleasure to work with and 
Uh, I really feel like we worked really well together as a team. Uh, so Dave Stewart, Colin Young, Chris Hogan. Um, and I'd like to especially recognize Sam Roberts. I know he's out there somewhere. Um, the superintendent on our project has essentially lived here on site for the last year and year and a half-ish. Uh, not really, but it feels like that. He's been really committed to the project and he's just done a fantastic job. So uh, thanks to everyone that's made this project a reality. Again, thanks everyone for being here and Brian. There's lots of Brian's on this project. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words. Um, I thought I'd take a little different tack today. I know uh, I don't want to take a long time, but I want to share something personal. Um, my art, the, the roots here in Spanish Fort go deep for my family. My wife's third great grandfather was Stephen Markham, um, who was a close associate of Joseph Smith. And when this, when they came here and settled, uh, he came and settled in Spanish Fork, and he's buried in the city cemetery. Um, and so I think about from those humble beginnings, where the city has come in, you know, in the last couple dec, a couple centuries, um, grown from those humble beginnings, and it's not such a small city anymore. Um, but due to the leadership and the foresight of the city leaders, um, you you have produced this amazing network and communication system that's unique among many cities. Others have tried it and haven't, haven't gone so well. Um, so congratulations to all of you um, for making that happen and being part of it. This is a wonderful community. Uh, Hogan Construction, we pride ourselves in, in being part of communities and building, quote unquote, communities. And um, it makes us proud to be part of this project and the impact it has on all of your lives. And so we're grateful to be part of it, and thank you for having us. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm going to go off the script just a little bit. I'm going to give uh, Mr. Dave Euler a, kind of a five-minute warning, maybe a two-minute warning, that uh, I'm going to invite you to come up, Dave. He's used to be the city manager and my boss. Uh, eight years ago when he retired, he's no longer my boss, so he can't fire me. But I'm going to invite Dave to come up and share a few words, if you would, uh, Dave. So get ready. Don't hate me. Uh, any, anytime I think about SFCN, and honestly, I get kind of nostalgic. I was sharing these feelings with, with some of you. Uh, as this project started before I was here, uh, in the late 90s and, and the first, uh, first few years of 2000s, uh, this was a monumental effort to create the community network. Going from those days in, in the late 90s, uh, and I mentioned this at the groundbreaking in November of 22, if you lived in Spanish Fork in 1999, it wasn't uncommon for you to pick up the phone to try to dial somebody and have a busy signal for a half hour. And that's 1999. I'm not talking 1899. I'm talking 1999. And Spanish work was living in a very horrible circumstance that the internet as it was growing and telephone circuits as they were, there weren't enough. And as a community, we couldn't make a phone call. Now, honestly, that to me feels like you're living in the Stone Ages. And for some, 1999 might feel like that was. But it wasn't. I was alive then, and I promised the world was in color, and, and we did have cars. But in 1999, 1998, 2000, the city council and the, the staff here were brave enough to say, this is not Spanish Fork. We don't live this way. We aren't going to be this way, and nobody is going to treat us this way, those being the, uh, what we call the incumbent providers of telecommunication. And so in 1999 and 2000, the brave members of our city council and mayor, some names you might recall, Dale Barney, Shermhoff, Clyde Swenson, Thora Shaw, Everett Kelepolo, who's here, uh, Lil Shepard, who is also here, Roy Johns, and Glenn James, over the course of a few years, these elected officials dreamed that we could do something about it. 
And with the help of great staff, Dave Euler being one of those as city manager, John Bocut, our uh, information systems director at that time, Junior Baker, our city attorney, Kent Clark, our finance director, and Jeff Foster, uh, our power superintendent, and Richard Heap, our public works director, put all of their heads together and said, yeah, we can do this. We don't really know how, but let's figure it out. And so they started researching. They went on uh, different site visits to different communities around the country, in Georgia, Oregon, and other places, to research, can a community start a fiber and coax company? The answer is yes. And some 25, 28 years later, this is the best municipally operated fiber and uh, fiber network, certainly in the state and perhaps even in the nation. And it's not just the best because of, of how it was built, perhaps maybe even more important, it's the best because of who built it and, and the, the desire that we've had from the beginning that this was a community network. And I love that the C in SFCN stands for community, it's ours. And so as you call with a problem, you get somebody here, we roll out an employee, oftentimes at late at night, whatever, whenever it is, you get help. Our techs, and many of them are here, they'll tell you, they go help people change batteries in their remotes. They just can't get this thing to work. And when they get there, they troubleshoot it, they pull out two double A's and they're like, I got this. Other providers in the telecom business won't do that. Uh, they solve much more complex problems than that, but they solve even those problems. And that's the nature of this community network. And to be a part of that as a community, we're blessed, we're lucky, as we save millions of dollars uh, every year because of how this system is set up, the prices that you and I get to pay as residents here. And so as I think about what's behind me and, and the opportunities of, of this building and what it will help us to do as, as we continue forward for years, uh, like I said, I, I, I get so nostalgic and grateful for those who had the courage to do what they did so that we can continue on in their footsteps doing the great things that we do. Thank you. And with that, Dave, would you mind coming up and sharing a few thoughts? Actually, let me rephrase that. He does mind, I'm sure. Dave, would you just simply come up and share a few thoughts? Uh, things have changed in the last 25 years since we started SFCN. Uh, I remember reading in some magazine something about fiber. Didn't know what it was, but as we sit down and talk to uh, some of the elected officials. I remember talking with Rex Woodhouse years ago about fiber optics because Rex was the councilman over the electric department. Uh, we decided there must be something in this. So with a great team that we had, both elected officials and staff, we put our heads together and came up with what uh, Seth has already introduced. I remember sitting together with the staff and saying, well, what are we gonna call this? And that was specifically discussed because it was important that we have something that people would recognize and understand. And we came up with all kinds of variations, but this network belongs to the community. And that's why we came up with the word Spanish Fork Community Network. Uh, when we originally built the system, we had long range plans. We didn't envision this structure, but we did envision that uh, this coax here eventually would disappear and that we would all be on fiber optics. Uh, I think we had a 15 year bond payment and we knew that at the end of the 15 years we could now take that money that was paying the bond and then invest that in building every house with fiber optics, with fiber network. So originally it was coax, fiber to the, to the node, and then coax to the house. And after that bond was paid for, now we had money freed up that we could convert the whole system into uh, a fiber optic system without having to bond again. So you, you uh, enjoy today some very nice rates 
compared to some of our competitors. I'll, I'll never forget the meeting we had in the council when we were having public hearings to start this thing and some of our uh, competitors uh, were trying to convince the council that we were definitely going to fail. There is no way that, that a city could do this. But again, with the fantastic team that we had, especially the fa fantastic elected officials, uh, I think we've showed them that yes, Spanish Fork City can provide a very excellent community network to our citizens. And John Bocat, uh, I don't see John, but he was kind of the, the brains behind the whole system. He knew all the technical stuff, and John put all the technical stuff together. And Brian's followed up with John, and, and now you have a great staff today and a great facility. And it's been fun to, to follow the project through the last 25 years and see where we've come from uh, virtually nothing to where you are today. And it has been an exciting trip. Congratulations to the, to the staff and the city for your new excellent facility. Well, I'll finish up with just saying thank you. Thank you to Dave. Thank you to, to everyone that's already been mentioned here. Uh, for a city to, to have a day like this uh, doesn't happen without all of those people and all of those decisions and, and not to mention the financial capability to be able to, to even have this as an option that many years ago is because your, your money, the citizens' money, was cared for carefully, conservatively, and, and the city was in a position to be able to say, here's a problem that we, that we think we can solve. And I think, I think Seth mentioned it, but underplayed the, the, the problem that we were facing as a city. You think about it now and the, the, the flow of information. Uh, is, there a, is there a business, is there an industry that, that uh, can't, uh, that, that can operate without now high speed fiber? Uh, you know, the industry I work in, I was, I was so proud, I think Brian, I, I called him up and he was probably, you don't need to be that geeked out about it, Mike. We already know what you're talking about. But I remember about five years ago with the, the position I took at, at my financial services company and saying, Brian, they, they reached out to me from the Midwest, our headquarters, and said, hey, you need to call uh, Spanish Fork Community Network. They have the fastest and most reliable network in your area, your office area. And it's one of the fastest speeds we've, we've even seen. In, uh, and they have 19,000 offices across the country for what I do. And, uh, and so not just my industry, obviously, that needs to click a button and, and move money just like that, but every other business now that calls Spanish Fork home uh, really takes, uh, you know, takes a look. And, and, and usually, I can't remember what those rates are, but they're pretty staggering of, of how many use our services, this service. So thank you. Thank you to everyone that, that made this decision. It truly speaks to, to, to Mayor Lafson's uh, uh, motto that, uh, that we brought back uh, from, uh, from many years ago in Spanish Fork, the home of pride and progress. We're certainly proud of everything that's been done before. And this SFCN building and the whole network is sure uh, a, a piece that we hold up and say this is progress uh, because it will continue to progress. So again, thank you all for, for being here today and, and celebrating with us. Um, we, hope, uh, we hope that you come see this building. Uh, I don't know, whenever Brian tells you you can, you, you, you might not need to all the time. It's sending a message or, or giving them a phone call to come out to you, which they do so well. But just another beautiful addition uh, to, to Spanish Fork, the home of Pride and Progress. So congratulations to everyone here today and congratulations to the city council, the current city staff, and, and everybody that, uh, that made today possible. And, and, and this is certainly a building we can pre be proud of. So give, your all, give everyone a round of applause, please. As customary in, in Spanish Fork, when we have a new building, uh, we have a prayer of dedication. And so if you'd uh, all join me in that and, and, and bow your heads, we'll, we'll dedicate this building now. 
Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee today in celebration of this new building that uh, built right here in our home in Spanish Fork City, the home of Pride and Progress. We ask uh, a special blessing to be on this building, that uh, it may be protected from the elements, that uh, those inside of it may be able to do their jobs clearly, effectively, and be safe uh, while on these grounds. We dedicate this, this building and these grounds unto thee and, uh, and in, the, uh, in the spirit of, of our hometown, uh, we dedicate it uh, to the people of Spanish Fork, the citizens that live here, and we ask thee for special protection on this building, on the grounds, and all of those that may come in contact with it inside and outside of this building. We're grateful for all of our blessings, for the place that uh, we get to call home, for the state that we get to live in, and for the country that uh, we're so fortunate to be a part of. Again, we are grateful for all of our blessings and dedicate this building unto thee and do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, it's the time you've all been waiting for, so I want to invite everyone that's been um, here sitting behind me to come up, as well as Miss Spanish Fork and her royalty. Dave, let's have you come back. And we would also like to invite any former mayors or council members that are here to come and join us. This is big. You know who you are. Five. Five. Four. 